Hey guys, Jamie Bond, Fish Blue Water. We're back for another Fish Blue Water video for you guys. The topic this evening is going to be targeting goggle eye. Our bait pens are empty, so what better time? The weather's perfect, super light winds. I'm told there's been some bait around, so we're gonna get out there and see if we can find them and uh, take you guys along for the ride. Alright, so we're here at Hillsborough Inlet waiting for the bridge to open and while we've got some downtime we're going to go ahead and get the bait rods rigged up and uh, just going to take an opportunity just to give you guys a little look-see at what we've got going on here. So um, these are the bait rigs that we're going to be using. It's an Ayabusa Sabiki rig, we call it a D119. I've been fishing this rig my whole life, bait fishing, it's definitely the go-to rig. And uh, you can see here looking at these rods, basically got nothing fancy that need to be fancy to catch fish um, about nine foot um, basically very light tip conventional rod got it attached to an old school TLD 25 Shimano reel I have out those on all the rods and reels and that's how we're gonna get this bad boy rigged up so first things first got to pull her out of the bait rig pack these things usually come with a little rubber band sleeve on them. And it'll usually tell you on the pack what's the rod side and what's the, the lead side. So this is my rod tip side. The reason that's important is it has to do with also how the actual hooks are gonna lay off of the bait rig. So I'm gonna undo this here. I actually, um, because this is just a snap swivel, I don't change it myself. Some guys may do differently. I leave a loop knot in my actual line and get ready to reel that up like so. Now all we got to do is start pulling this rig. Not get yourself hooked, which is a very easy thing to do. If I was actually offshore, one of the things that I would do is just attach the lead right to this. And a lot of times the lead itself, the weight of the lead, will actually easily take the hooks right off of the rig. Now, you can see here, I've got basically bank sinker in my hand. This is a 24 ounce lead. We're gonna use anything from typically from like a 16 to a 24 ounce. Um, you can go lighter than that. The danger of that, however, is, you know, we're gonna be fishing a few rods tonight. If the bait fishing's good and you leave a rod unattended and you've got three, four, five goggle eyes on it on a lighter lead, they'll swim that whole rig together and you'll have a complete mess on your hands. So typically a 20 to 24 ounce lead um, will give you a little bit of extra time if you've got baits on multiple rods to get to that rod while you're going from one fish to the next. So there we go. Rig's ready to go. Obviously, we're not goggle eye fishing in 10 foot of water. We'll talk about that later. But all I'm gonna do is take this rod, drop my lead right in my rod holder. You wanna keep tension on your rig. And basically we're going to have the whole boat set up that way with the four rods we're going to be fishing. So once we clear the bridge, we're ready to run offshore, see if we can find some bait 
and get these rigs in the water. All right, so uh, we're set up out here, as you can see, in about 260. We got a, a light east wind to be pushing us inshore and a little bit of north current. So I got those four bait rods that I was showing you guys, and we're gonna just stagger those in different depths, anywhere from 25 feet below the surface on down to as deep as 100 feet. But again, this is where this Simrad unit is gonna come in key because hopefully we start marking some bait and we can see where they're at in that water column. We know where we need to place our rigs. What I'm doing here about every, every couple of arms lengths I'm pulling off is a couple of feet. And that gives me an idea, you know, as I'm counting it off in my head, just about how deep I am. So this bait rod here is set at about 65 feet. All right, check this out. So as we're drifting over the bottom here in 240, you can see this structure that we've marked on the bottom here. That is actually a wreck on the bottom um, that I did not know was there. But I'm gonna take my finger, get my cursor right there. And if I remember how to do this, checkpoint gives me a waypoint at the cursor. And just like that, we can add this as a new spot. Step back, raise your rod tip up. Rod tip to me. Keep lifting the bait rod. All right, swing the rod tip out that way. Keep going, swing it all the way out, right? We got two. We're moving up in the world. The baits are hanging away from the rig. Slide your de-hooker down. Just like that. There we go. All right, back in. Watch your... I like it. So, as long as I've been doing this, there doesn't seem to be any science to figuring these bait fish out. I mean, this is an incredible mark on the screen right here. But sometimes what happens is, depending upon moon phase, tide, current, different things, you may be marking great wads of bait like that and they're just not feeding. And then all of a sudden, somebody flips the switch and bang, 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 the rods just start going off left and right. So that's a good sign that we're seeing some bait. They're not really feeding yet, but we're gonna stick it out and see what happens. I just saw the rod tip start to bounce a little bit. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take it out of the rod holder and I'll just hold it there and slowly reel it in for a minute because a lot of times as you're doing that, you can start to turn one or two baits into a few baits and they start to load up on the rig a little bit. So let's we'll see what we got here. What I'm doing right now a little bit just because we're marking some bait but they're not really biting that good is I'm just kind of slightly jigging the rod, bringing it up and letting it fall what that does is it gets those bait rigs kind of moving up and down the water column, almost looking a little bit more like small live baits like they're feeding on. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's how we start adding up the numbers there when you can get them on the rod. Um, when you can get them on the rig like four and five at a time and you start to get into a little flurry of bites, it doesn't take long for the numbers to start adding up. So right now, this rod actually was the shallowest of the rods. I probably had this one sitting at 40 or 50 feet. Most of our gogs that we've been catching so far have all been a little bit deeper, about 80 feet. But that's a good sign when you start to catch them on the shallower rods. Typically that means, of course, they're, they're starting to come up higher in the water column. So hopefully that'll continue to happen. All right, uh, we just reset. We're down here off the Pompano Pier, which is about where we started. In about 215 feet of water, started to mark some bait again. So I'm gonna get the ro rods back out and see if we can keep plucking away at them. This is feeling like a lot of gogs or a couple of big runners. They're definitely swimming pretty hard. 
Uh, ooh, and I was correct. There are gogs, it's a full Monty. That's no bueno. Runner trash the rig, but we're gonna try and salvage the gogs. And this is what happens when you don't get to your rig in time and you're fishing. We talked about those light leads. This has a 16 ounce lead, which is the smallest lead that I'm fishing right now. And we've got a nice bird's nest there, courtesy of those baits and the runner, which means retie. All right, so it's just about one o'clock in the morning and we certainly didn't crush the bait, but we caught enough to make it worthwhile for coming out. So, um, so I can actually function tomorrow. We're gonna wrap it up. Um, in doing that though, I'm gonna show you guys um, how to actually stow your bait rig when you're breaking everything down. So let me get this rig in and I'll show you how to put that away. All right, so I've got the bait rig up now we need to get it all tucked away so that we can store it. And the way that you do that with these Sabiki rigs is you actually take your top hook on the top of the rig and you connect it hook to hook like so. Start it out. Then you go and you take that loop coming off that connection that you made. You take your next hook and you hook that to that. And basically we just keep repeating that process all the way down the rig until we get to the bottom. Starting to get further down. So I'm gonna crank this up a little bit further. There we go. All right. So now we've got it all hook to hook hook to loop, made it to the actual bottom of the rig and the lead. Now I can unsnap that swivel, line comes off, push the swivel back through. All right, so I've got that, uh, everything connected as far as the bait rigs are concerned, hook to hook and hook to loop. I'm gonna go back basically around with that snap swivel. I can take that final dropper loop connected to the snap swivel and crank, and we're ready to go. That makes it uh, a lot easier to store where your hooks aren't hanging loose, end up uh, snagging somebody or rest of your gear, and that's how you want to stow your rod. So once again, um, it's been a great night out here. We managed to catch a handful of baits that we're going to be able to fun fish with in the near future, and hopefully you guys learned a little something about catching gogs offshore here in uh, South Florida. And if this seems like this isn't your cup of tea, the other option for catching them is breaking out your wallet and the $100 bills, and there's plenty of great bait guys around here as well. Uh, but until the next episode, Jamie Bond, Fish Blue Water, we'll see you soon. <laughs>